Now, back to your turn on 1330 WEBY, Northwest Florida's talk radio. The phone lines are open, so call in and join the conversation at 623-1330. And now, the Commander-in-Chief is back. Freedom Friday with Carl Gallops, the Oval Office of Gulf Coast Talk Radio. All right, welcome back, America. Freedom Friday with Carl Gallops. And as I have been promising you, Eric Hovind is with us in the uh, studio via telephone uh, live. Eric, welcome to Freedom Friday. Hey, Carl, good to be with you, man. Man, it's good to have you back. I enjoy having you every time uh, that you're with us. And uh, and uh, Eric Hovind is the president and CEO of Creation Today. He's got a huge Internet uh, presence and a worldwide ministry. And, uh, Eric, uh, you've, you've got a big conference coming up in October down in Orlando called the Proof of God Conference. Tell everybody about that. I could not be more excited about a conference. While less than 2% of people actually share their faith on a regular basis, 100% of Christians are at one time or another challenged to defend their faith. Yeah. And what we've discovered is a lot of Christians cannot defend their faith in God. And so we have put together a conference called the Proof of God Conference that is specifically designed to teach you in one weekend the foundation of your faith and how to defend it biblically. We find oftentimes people that are defending their faith are doing one of two things wrong. Either they're defending God wrong and defending an, a, a possible God or a, a maybe God or a, a we hope so God, or they're just defending the wrong God altogether and they're not talking about the one true absolute God of the Bible. And so this conference is not designed to turn people into geniuses overnight so that they can uh, be apologetical geniuses, but it is designed to teach them the foundation of their faith and how to defend it biblically starting at the very, very beginning of, uh, of our worldviews. So I, I just, I, like I said, I couldn't be more excited. We've got an incredible, incredible lineup of speakers. We've got uh, Carl Kirby for Reason, from Reasons for Hope Ministry, Saitan Bergenkate from ProofTheGodExist.org, uh, Ken Ham from Answers in Genesis, Mark Spence from Way of the Master, Paul Taylor, who works with me here at Creation Today, yeah. and myself, as well as a number 12 different breakout speakers. It really is going to be amazing. Yes, that does sound absolutely amazing. Tell folks how they can go. Can they get uh, uh, group rates, and uh, how do people get uh, tickets to this thing, and uh, how do they reserve rooms, and uh, do you have a website for it? I know the answer to all those, but you tell the folks. we got a great website called ProofConference.com, P-R-O-O-F, for those that are alphabetically challenged, ProofConference.com, and from there you can register. Of course, our toll-free number is on there, but if you want that, it's 877-479-3466, 877-479-3466, and I'm happy to announce that we have a few um, – seats left that are available for pastors only where they can get in absolutely free and they got to call our toll-free number to get that that's 877-479-3466 so if you want your pastor to attend this it's going to be in the orlando area on october 12th and 13th of the 2012 it's uh, this one month away and we are really excited about it right we're going to have uh, street preaching opportunities uh, for us to learn from mark spence as he does breakout sessions we're going to I uh, have tracks that uh, during our dinner break we actually go out and, and put this into practice. Uh, I don't mean to scare people away, but it really is It's going to be a really good time. Yeah. No, it sounds awesome, and I appreciate the information. Well, listen, Eric, let's do this. Let, let me tell our listeners, first of all, if you would like to call in and be a part of this next segment of our show and talk to Eric Hoven, uh, especially if you have questions for Eric, uh, listen, Eric and I would love it if somebody would call us and challenge us. I mean, we're up for a challenge. You up, you up for that, Eric? I love Love challenges, baby. Okay. Well, and in, in particular, and Eric is a gentleman. He is gracious, and I promise I will be a gracious gentleman. Uh, so, if you are a pro evolutionist, if you just don't see what all the hubbub is, and uh, you, you want to challenge uh, some of our statements or our beliefs, because he and I are getting ready to launch off into this in the next few seconds, uh, feel free to call six two three thirteen thirty area code eight five zero. Tell Mallory you want to get in on the conversation. As soon as I see it up on the board, I will plug you right in, right in the middle. I don't care if Eric's in the middle of talking or if I'm in the middle of talking. I'll just plug it in, and you can come in, and uh, we'll, we'll have a good time. But, uh, Eric, you and I talk a lot about that. Well, <laughs> you know, we, we each have ministries in this, but you and I are friends and have been for a long time, and we talk a lot about this. And one of the things that, uh, uh, that I continually emphasize is that evolution is not 
settled science. There's some in, it, yeah, it's just not. It's just not. There's some interesting propositions. Newsflash, ev- ev- newsflash. Yeah. Ev- well, well, the reason I say that is because you turn on the History Channel and they'll say billions of years ago. You pick up a textbook, it'll say the fossil evidence proves. You, you turn on uh, the Learning Channel millions of years ago when man roamed the earth. I mean, it's it's as though it's settled science. And of course, it, yeah. yeah. But you you go ahead. You talk about it. I'm tired. Oh, of talking. That's exactly the way. They present it, and it is so frustrating because we go, wait a minute, it's a theory. And as Paul Taylor, my colleague here, would point out, he would say, wait, a theory is something that actually has evidence to support it, and we're wondering if that's you know what really happened. Evolution isn't even a theory because there's no evidence supporting it. Now, a lot of your people out there are probably going, wait a minute, or if you're an atheist or an evolutionist, you're going, wait a minute. Evolution has lots of evidence. Now we got to get into semantics. What do you mean by evolution? Right. Most people, when they think of evolution, they think of the big picture. Okay, ape turned into human at some point. You know, we have our apes and humans have a common ancestor. Right. That kind of evolution, there's no proof of whatsoever. Absolutely. All we see is what we call horizontal evolution, and really it shouldn't even be called evolution. It's simple variations within kinds of animals. Right, and all evolution means, that word's been co-opted anyway, all it yes. means is just change, change over time, and, and as you said, between it, it, within species uh, or between animals. I mean, dogs are always dogs, uh, cats are always cats, horses are always horses, even though there are multiplicities of variations of those. Uh, yeah. so, so you have that. I mean, that's a scientific fact. I mean, the Bible talks about about that, so we don't, we don't have a problem with that, right? The Chihuahua is, as far as I can go and say, maybe they got a point, but <laughs> no, it's still a dog. Come on, I know. Let's, let's see it's, this. It really is plain yeah. as day. I mean, you, it kind of look at it. It's kind of a mixture between a cat, a rat, and a dog. I mean, you know, you got to you got and a squirrel. You got to admit, hey, let's go to the phone lines. We got a fellow on the line, Ward. You have a question for Eric Hoven. Go ahead, uh, Ward. Thank you, by the way, for being a part of Freedom Friday. Yeah, hi. Thanks a lot, uh, Eric. Uh, it's good to talk to you again. Uh, as you probably know, I just uh, recently uh, was released from one of our government's uh, gated communities after spending <laughs> six and a half years there for uh, charges very similar to your dad. In fact, I spent uh, some time together in the same facility with him. Wow, bless you. I didn't realize. And I know they've been uh, uh, moving him uh, with diesel therapy from place to place, and I was just wondering if you'd give us an update and let us know how he is. I hope he's yeah. doing well. Thank you, Ward. Okay. Well, thank you very much for asking. I had the privilege of going to see him. He's in Colorado right now. I haven't seen him for a year and a half until two and a half weeks ago. I finally got to go see him. And, man, it was just good to see him and and love on him. He's doing really well. He's led over 50 guys in that current prison to Christ. Uh, That takes his total in the last five years that he's been incarcerated up to over 400. So he is spreading the truth of the gospel and not wasting any time. Uh, People that want to read his stuff, they can go to Kent Hovind blog.com and check that out. And I don't remember if it's blogs or blog, but it's one of those. Kenthovenblog.com. Okay. They can check that out. All right. Fantastic, Eric. Hey, Eric, let's do this. Let's take this time out so that you'll not have plenty of time for the to the top of the hour because I've got some uh, something that I really want you, the expert, to settle for us on this deal of evolution, okay? All right. All right. Good deal. Folks, you're listening to Freedom Friday with Carl Gallops. Eric Hovind is my special guest this afternoon, uh, president and CEO of Creation Today. We'll be right back after this brief time out. Now, back to your turn on 1330 WEBY, Northwest Florida's talk radio. The phone lines are open, so call in and join the conversation at 623-1330. How can one man bother so many people by simply telling the truth? Freedom Friday with Carl Gallops, the Oval Office of Gulf Coast Talk Radio. All right, and we are back, America Freedom Friday with Carl Gallops. Uh, Eric Hovind is our guest today. Eric, by the way, before we get started here, I want to thank you for having me on Creation Today. Uh, I saw that when it aired, and I've seen the video clip of it, and you guys sure did make me sound smart and look good. (laughs) Well, the looking good, you're the one who stays in shape, so uh, I appreciate that. But yeah, on our, our Creation Today show, which airs once a week, your show came out yesterday, and we are so glad. We've already gotten a lot of great compliments about it, so 
Thank you very much for being a part of that and coming over to the studio and filming that with us. Uh, you can go to creationtoday.org, and you can watch his show uh, today. It's a 30-minute, half-hour program, uh, and we're talking about the re- the need for this conference that we're doing right now. Yeah, yeah. You no, know, it was a great show, even with my part <laughs> in it, but uh, but thank you. And, and, no, the honor is mine. It is mine. Well, let's, let's move along. Listen, uh, one of the things that's uh, really in, in, in my craw about this whole evolution thing is that— um, the foundation of evolution is origins theory. That's the foundation of it. I mean, I, I mean, you know, how everything happened. How did it get here? And yep. and the very foundation basically says, and we'll keep it in layman's terms, that you know, uh, that that originally life came from non-life. The first single cell living organism came about through a magical mud soup with a magical lightning strike with magical time. And here's a magically produced living cell that magically decided it wanted to reproduce itself. I'm going to leave out the word magic because it gets, it gets old after a while that, <laughs> that, that, that then, that then after it decided, then it decided it wanted to become a multi-celled organism. And then it decided, you know, and, and it goes on and on with this fairy tale and, and eventually, we've got man and 20 million other species of life, along with their systems, their subsystems, and their sub-subsystems. And it all started with a Big Bang and a magical soup and life coming from non-life. But you and I both know, Eric, that life coming from non-life, not only is it not scientific, but it is superstition. It really is. That's why we say, really, the evolution worldview is based on faith. It is a religious worldview just as much as mine is a religious worldview. Now, they don't like to hear that because they like to say, no, it's science. Like you said, it's settled scientific fact. But in reality, it's not. And when you push any evolutionist uh, to the wall and say, okay, tell me how life started, they'll say, well, we don't have that one figured out, but that's not really evolution. Yeah. That's, that's, that, that's not a, you know, biology deals with life once it's here. That's that's another department's problem, and, and, and they're really they're playing this shell game where they're saying, no, we've got it figured out. The real problem is over here with you know the origin of life. They and they say, oh, and they're just shelling it around, and there's 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 no P under any shell in this game. They're fooling us. There's no proof. There's no evidence for life to happen. You got to have so many systems in place at the exact same time in the exact same way. If you have one little system, your heart, if it goes bad, your whole life is done. That's right. It's not like you can just, oh, that system isn't important. You've got to have all of them together That's right. working properly. That's right. What I find even more frustrating than this is the fact that anytime I talk to an evolutionist, their desire is to talk in the realms of science. But I say, hold it. What is the underlying principle to do science? In order to do science, we have to believe in the uniformity of nature. In other words, what happens today will happen again tomorrow. Yo, no, right, absolutely. But the evolution worldview cannot account for the uniformity of nature. They say everything is always constantly changing and evolving. Right. You right. don't try to put a man on a moon if you don't know what's going to happen when you push that button. That's, we do science based on the uniformity of nature. And the Christian worldview is the only worldview that says we've got a God that says he's going to keep things the same yesterday, today, and forever. We can account for the uniformity of nature. The unbeliever, the evolutionist, cannot account for the uniformity of nature. No. They want to talk about science on that science level before they can even account for the ability to do science. Absolutely. And while they talk about science, and by the way, if you want to weigh in and if you want to agree or disagree, call 623-1330, area code 850-623-1330. You can talk to Eric uh, and, and you can disagree with him and, and, and let him talk with you. But while they speak of science, then immediately they get into pseudoscience with abiogenesis, chemosynthesis, uh, uh, spontaneous generation. And then you just mentioned the perfect illustration, the systems of a human being, for example. There are 12 systems, you know, the, the, the endocrine system, the circulatory system, the nervous system, the digestive system, the elimination system, et cetera, et cetera. And as you so brilliantly pointed out, you can't, if you take any one of those systems away, you die. Yeah. Which, which means all 12 systems, with, with the exception of the reproductive system, all 12 systems have to be in place functioning together or the human being won't function. Now, the question is, 
when did evolution decide that? <laughs> and how did evolution I love decide how we that? Give, or evolutionists have to give evolution a personality. It literally does become their god, and that's why it's a religion, because anything that they can't explain or anything that they want to explain, evolution did it. Yeah. As in, like when we say, well, that's the way God did it, they say that's the way evolution did it. Yeah. And they get upset with us for saying, well, you guys are just the god of the gaps. If you don't understand something, you don't go to science, you say God did it. I say, you know what? I'm not just a god of the gaps. God did not just do the things we don't know. I'm a god of what we do know. Right. The god that the god that we serve created what we know and what we don't know. Right. Right. They are evolutionists of the gap, though. By the way, they just—if they can't explain it well, you know, science yeah. and evolution will explain it one day. It just hasn't yet. That's right. And you made another brilliant point, and that's why you're the president of creation today, because you are brilliant, and, and, and you are. I mean, God has gifted you with a brilliant mind, and you've come from an awesome family and great stock, and you've been in this since you were a child. So, I mean, you you can debate with the best of the debaters, but you made another brilliant point uh, a, 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 a moment ago when you were talking about how they give personality to the word evolution. You know, I've never thought of that before, Eric, but you're absolutely right. The, it, it, the word evolution takes on a personality, and it literally becomes their person, their, their God that does everything. That's exactly right. You know what I find even more frustrating, Carl, than all of this? What's that? Is going into a conversation with an evolutionist or an atheist, there are certain assumptions that both sides have. We assume that our speech is going to be understood by the other person. We assume that we're going to speak logically, that the laws of logic are going to hold, that, that, that neither one of us is going to uh, allow contradictions. We assume these things. Right. The problem is, once again, the evolutionary, the atheistic worldview cannot account for the laws of logic, the laws of math, the laws of morality, the laws of science. I love it when they go against God and say, well, the God of the Bible is a wicked God. Right. Well, they're making a moral argument against God. But the laws of morality are universal. Right. They're, they're immaterial. They're not made out of matter. And they're universal, they're immaterial, and they're unchanging. Right. How does your worldview, Mr. Atheist or Mr. Evolutionist, that is a worldview that says the world is only made out of matter, it's constantly changing, it's not eternal, how does that worldview come up with... Uh, come up with things that are exact opposite of its very characteristic. Absolutely. Another brilliant point. And, and out of this magical mud soup, where do the laws of nature come from, as you just said? Yeah. Where, 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 does, where, where does the language of DNA come from? My goodness, when did evolution decide that it was going to create a chemical language called <laughs> <laughs> when, I mean, I mean, you know, when you just break this down scientifically, evolution is, is a joke. It's a joke from beginning to end. It's really sad to see how many people, and that's where the Bible says, you know, it really is not the brilliant mathematician that says there's no God. It's not the scholarly scientist. It's not the amazing atheist. And it's not in, in, uh, engaging in name-calling. It's, it's saying intellectually, it is the fool that says there is no God. Right. It, 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 re it just it really is foolish. Now, right. i got to say, though, the, re the reason I believe people don't see the truth is the Bible says there are some people that can't see because uh, 2 Timothy 2.25 if God, peradventure, would grant repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. They've got to repent before they can see the truth. Right. And For that time, as the Bible says, the God of this world has blinded the right. minds of them which believe not, lest the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ could shine unto them. So right. they are literally blinded by the God of this world. And our prayer, you know, the magic, I like to try to figure out, what's the magic bullet? How do we reach these people? What, what is it? The magic bullet is the Holy Spirit, my friend. You can sh you can try to shove all the evidence you want down somebody's throat, but it is the Holy Spirit that converts. Yeah, so very well spoken. You know, Eric, we've got, we've got to have you back on. Uh, we're running slap out of time now, but before we go, and I do have to let you go, but before we do, tell the folks one more time about Proof of God Conference because that's an amazing thing coming up. Tell them all about it, websites, how they can do it. Talk to us about it. Man, really cool conference with some amazing speakers. You can check out all the details at our website, Proof conference.com proofconference.com or if you'd like to register by phone you can call our toll-free number which is 
3466 877-479-3466. We've got six amazing speakers, Ken Ham from Answers in Genesis, Carl Kirby from Reason for Hope, Mark Spence from Way of the Master in California, uh, Seitz and Brigenkate from ProofThatGodExists.org, Paul Taylor uh, from Right Here Creation Today, and myself, along with 12 other breakout session speakers uh, that I'm just so excited about. Most Christians, when I challenge them to defend their faith, do it wrong. It's not biblical. And we want to encourage Christians to learn how to defend their faith biblically. I ask this, and I don't know if I have 30 more seconds, but I'll ask you this. If you were born in India, do you think you'd be a Hindu right now? Yeah. A lot of people say, yeah, I probably would be. Right. But, you know, we'd only be Hindu out of ignorance, right? Right. Oh, yeah, sure. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Let me ask you something. If you're sitting here in the United States of America, let me ask you something. How do you know you're not a Christian out of ignorance? Good. If you can't answer that question, you need to come to this conference. That's good. That's good. That's really good, Eric. God bless you for that. Eric Coven, thank you so much for being a part of Freedom Friday. We will have you back on. Thank you, Carl. God bless. Okay, God bless you as well. Hang on to the line if you would, Eric. I want to speak with you off air. Well, folks, listen, you've listened to another edition of Freedom Friday with Carl Gallops. We're going to be closing it down in the next few moments, but uh, we encourage you, if you like what you heard today and want to share it with other folks, uh, tell them to go to carlgallops.com at the top of the page. Click the Get Podcasts Here, and you can. Uh, this whole program is being podcast, and you can uh, download segments of it or the entire program as well. Again, go to carlgallops.com. Hey, listen, you want to check out Eric's website and uh, all that he's talking about, Proof of God Conference, go to carlgallops.com, upper right-hand corner, click the link, Proof of God Conference, or go down under the Freedom Friday segment, uh, Featured Guests, and click on Eric Hoven's name, and from there, it'll take you to all of his website. So all right there at carlgallops.com as well. Well, this has been another edition. It's good to be back in the saddle live. Thanks for Mike Bates last week, Mallory Bardwell, your world-famous producer, all the folks at WEBY, we thank you for being a part of WEBY. We'll be back next Friday with some more special guests and a wonderful time. I want to thank my listening audience and thank you for making my book a number one bestseller, The Magic Man in the Sky, Effectively Defending the Christian Faith. Go to carlgallops.com. It's all right there. You can order it on Amazon. We'll be back next Friday. God bless you. God bless America. Folks, you're listening to Freedom Friday with Carl Gallops. Eric Hovind is my special guest this afternoon, uh, President and CEO of Creation Today. We'll be right back after this brief timeout.